Hey, Joe B., um, you know, a team that was kind of struggling to score, and we were talking to, to uh, Coach Carbs about this each week, and they were just kind of struggling to put the puck in the net. Um, you know, they score four in the Stars game. They score four in the Rangers game and four more in the Blackhawks, Blackhawks game. So 12 goals in the last three. Is something turning around offensively? Bish, you won't hear very many complaints from me about that. <laughs> right, right. Obviously, the play-by-play guy likes to call, to call goals. But, um, you know, I think so many of these things are, are cyclical, Jason, that, um, and again, when you start getting into a quarter of the season now, we're not talking about just one small little cycle, one small little pocket. Definitely, when you look at the statistics overall in the league, the Caps have not been scoring anywhere near where they'd like to. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the power play percentage ineffectiveness has a, a, a part in that. But when, when you just add it up by goals per game, they're nowhere near where they want to be. But then when you click for four straight, uh, for four in three different times, now you're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And obviously when they go back into meeting rooms and the coaches talk with them, they can obviously see that there's, there's a, a goal, no pun intended, in mind here. And, and they've been able to turn the light on a little bit more uh, in, in recent outings. I like what I see in, in terms of the, the line trios, the combinations. A lot of times coaches will experiment and try to explore and they'll break things up pretty regularly. This line groupings, these line groupings, pairings have been put together for the past few games, and they're starting to get some traction, and you're seeing goals as a result. I think more than anything, some of the Caps' top offensive producers are having some bad puck luck. They're not bearing down and finishing as well as they would normally do, and that's led to it, too. There's a lot of reasons why, but for the moment, when you see them uh, scoring the way they did in the past three games, you're pleased, and you can point to that and use that as a carrot to dangle and say, hey, this is what we can do. Hey, Joe B., I re- uh, uh, let me just cut to the chase here, man. i got to ask you the OV question. Um, and it's been 10 games, you know, better than anybody, what's going on. Explain to me the novice, the guy that's only casually paying attention. I, I refuse to believe that OV is markedly different physically or whatever than he was last year when he still had such a very, very good year. Is he one of the guys with the puck luck and the, just not quite finishing things that he normally would? Or are we seeing, are you seeing a definitive drop-off? When you look at the production through the first two months, that's not Alex Ovechkin-like numbers. Right. And we see that the power play at times, you know, again, I've used this word on the air. I don't like to because it's it's an ugly word, but they've been their their success ratio was putrid there for a while, mm. and it's getting better. And Alex is a big part of that, obviously. When mm-hmm. uh, when you talk about somebody who scored 300 power play goals in their career, he has won this season, and it was a tap in against t- Toronto. It's not the the traditional OV blast from the top of the circle that ha- that leaves the goalie gasping. He's had those opportunities. He's uncorked those shots, EB. Goalies have made good saves. He's missed the mark. He's tugged them wide. Players are in closer proximity to him. Uh, they're more willing, it looks, seems like, to block those shots. These are not excuses. These are just things that I see. It's not with a word. Like, his, there's no with way. With regard to his production, yeah. though, let me get there. Yeah. With regard to his production, what I do see that – has happened, I think, over time, and again, mm-hmm. father time undefeated. Alex is not creating his own shot in, in terms of basketball parlance sure. um, the way he's used to. He's not separating from defenders as well as he used to. Therefore, his great shot has been minimized. That shot's always going to be great. We've talked about this. He's going to be shooting 1,000 miles right. an hour in the beer leagues when he's playing in 70. Right, right. that's but, why I would say it hasn't deteriorated. It's not as good. Okay, he's not separating as well. I get that, mm-hmm. but that that's not an answer for why he's still shooting 150 mile an hour rockets from his office. Um, as far as them not going in, or well, in other words, the, he hasn't dropped. Like he's still got that rocket, and maybe he's just been a little unlucky. Just or you know, maybe he's got to dial it in. Maybe he's got to put some more ice time yeah, in. Yeah, I'd I'd say that, and but but his playmaking, his passing has been good. He still has yeah a, a, a decent le- legitimate kind of assist total. Mm-hmm. So he's contributing in other ways, and I, I think he's going to again. You're not going to have to reinvent an 800 goal scorer here, but he is going to have to do some different things, maybe take different paths, different routes that right. are going to enable him to get that shot off because we're seeing defenders play him tighter. 
not fear him as much, not back off and give him room. Okay, because he can't skate game, around them the anymore. Is, and the game is speeding up, too, EB, for him. Okay. And that's why you're seeing some puck bobbles and some missteps, and uh, those are all things that he's going to have to adjust to, and I'm sure he has the hockey ability to do that. It's just that's not the 50-goal scorer that you've been seeing. I, under, I completely understand the question. Yeah. He's going to have to make – some adjustments and alterations to his game to be as effective as he can. And I think he tends to work well with Strom. I think that's a combination that they've mm-hmm. they're committed to for at least the short term here, more so than Alex with Evgeny Kuznetsov for now. But like a comfortable shoe, after a while you go back to putting Kuznetsov there. You would go back to putting Backstrom there with whether he was available. For now, I think – the best playmaking option for Alex is Dylan Strom. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry for being obtuse. I didn't quite understand what you were saying. You're saying if the if the play like if it, if you can't go around a guy, then obviously they can play him tighter. And so I get it. Yes, I get it. Yeah, they, I, get I it. think uh, the respect level when you know, four or five years, however many years you want to put Alex into his best light. I mean, he's in. He's a tremendous goal scorer and playmaker, but. I think what I have seen in recent times is that defenders close on him better than they ever used to. Got now, it. You I got it. Put whatever reason on that, his ability to to beat them one on one is not what it was. So they close out on I him more and limit his shooting ability. I got it. I completely right. get it. Real quick, uh, we've got about a minute left. Philly uh, on Thursday night, they have won four straight, and then they are one point better than Washington. Um, Obviously going to be tough. It's a road. you got three road games in a row coming up. Philly, Nashville, and I think Carolina. Talk to me about the Flyers. Yeah, really great matchup. We're looking forward to that one, Bish, on, on Monumental on Thursday. Philadelphia is a team that's, I think, outplayed expectations. John Tortorella is a wonderful coach. And to have them winning four straight, to have them 15, 10, and 2, I believe they're in Nashville tonight. The Caps will see Nashville at the uh, on the weekend. Um, you know, Philadelphia with Couturier and with Atkinson, two guys they didn't have at all last year, they're, they present different challenges. And I like their structure. You know they're going to work their tails off. It's a Tortorella team, so they're going to be willing to block shots and do whatever they can to help their goalies. It's a good matchup. It's a good divisional rivalry. Can't wait for Thursday. Joe B., always a pleasure, buddy. Let's Thank get, you, pal. Let's get some wins. Maybe we'll talk to you next week. You got it. Anytime. All right. My thanks, man. man. My man, Joe B.